Hi, I'm Sarah Veblen. I sell quite a number of different shoulder pads on my website. They're beautifully constructed Japanese shoulder pads. I really love these shoulder pads. They are all uncovered and what I'm going to do today is to show you how to cover them. It's really easy. What you need is a piece of fabric and a ham and your shoulder pad. And what I've done is pinned my shoulder pad to the ham and then steamed it and then I let it dry. Once it's dry, and that really only takes a few minutes, and you take the shoulder pad off, you'll see that it has this nice shape. And that's good because it's going to be sitting on your shoulder like this and then it's already preformed. When you have a pad like that, it's important to orient it correctly on your body. How I remember it is fat goes in the front. This sl more slender part goes on the back shoulder and the fat goes on the front. And you can see here we have a matching set of shoulder pads. So the fronts are facing me and the back is facing the camera. And when you put them on the ham, you want to be sure to have them like that. You can use almost any fabric to cover your shoulder pad. This is a piece of china silk. I like to use it because it's very thin and lightweight. I also sometimes use ambiance. Or you could use crepe de chine or a synthetic, anything you want really. What I've done to get set up here is I've clipped the edge of the fabric and ripped it. That gives me a perfect cross grain. And then I've put the selvage on a perpendicular cross grain. Now I know my fabric is really grained up. And that's important because I am going to cover my shoulder pad using the bias grain coming along this edge of the shoulder pad. And it's nice because you can see, you can just follow a diagonal right down the middle of a set of squares. And that's your bias. Now this piece of fabric is bigger than I need but I just wanted to have plenty. Sometimes I start off when I don't have quite enough. And you're going to put the pad, remember to keep it formed cupping upward, and then fold this other fabric over it. And I like to try to keep this edge here not tight against the shoulder pad, but snug. And so what I did there was I just pushed back on the pad a little bit, and I'm going to just pop a pin in there to hold it in place while I work on this side and then that side. And then I'm just going to bring the fabric around. So I've got a nice snug edge here and then I'm going to get a pin in there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And what's nice about working on the bias is that you have a lot of ability to manipulate and form the fabric right around your pad. It's important to keep your pad cupped because it's going to go on your shoulder. And I'm just going to now work out here and put a pin in and come up on the edges. I'm going to turn this so that you've got a better view into what I'm doing. So you can see I'm just pulling it nice and flat almost, I would call it taut but not tight. So I'm not distorting the shape of the pad by how much I'm pulling it. I'm just getting a nice, clean, snug fit of the silk around the pad. Now I'm just going to move this pin in a different orientation and then work on this side. If your pad is not terribly cupped, as the case with this, this happens to be number 409. You can do just exactly what I'm doing. If it's super formed, you're going to have to get a little tuck of fabric in there, and I'll show that in a different video. So now the fabric is nice and formed here. I don't have any bubbles, and what I want to do is to check to see if I have bubbles on the other side. And I can see that that's nice and formed here. I've got a little bit of a bubble right there. So I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to take this pin out and just smooth that fabric out. 
This is the bias grain at work. It's really nice. You can just do a lot of manipulation with it. It doesn't matter to me that I have some pins on this side and some on the other. Now what I'm going to do is cut away the excess fabric. I'm leaving oh maybe five-eighths of an inch around it. It doesn't have to be exact. Maybe three-quarters of an inch, something like that. And I'm going to stitch. Sometimes I'll hand stitch here and then go to the serger and go around it. In this case I'm going to hand baste and what I'm doing is just a pretty large running stitch here and I'm barely catching a, the very edge of the shoulder pad. I'm not up in here but I'm just barely on that edge. It doesn't even matter that I'm on the edge on every single stitch, just some stitches. And it's nice to hand baste like this, I think, because then when you go to the serger, you don't have to have any pins in your work. And if you're like me, you're always careful not to cut a pin in half and ruin your knife blades. Mm -hmm. And I've removed the pins, and now I can go to the serger. Now I've put the thread tail of the serger onto a blunt needle, a tapestry needle, and I'm going to thread that back up into the serger stitch. And that's so that I don't have to use Freycheck or a similar product to secure the serger ends. I happen to use a three thread serger stitch because I wanted this one to be very lightweight. Got my needle flying around. Sometimes I'll use a four thread if I know the garment's going to have a whole, whole lot of wear. And there is your covered shoulder pad. And then I'm going to remove my basting stitch. Sometimes it'll just come out and sometimes I've caught it in the serging and it's not quite so easy. But you can get those little stitches out. That's where I finished it up. So there's no stitching in this part of the pad or on the underside where there is stitching that just barely catches the edge of the pad on the serger was right where I had basted. So the needle of the serging stitch went pretty much right along that basting. That way you don't have a lot of shoulder pad showing in here, yet the shoulder pad is just caught by the serger stitch so it can't move around independently of your pad. And it's a really nice looking pad. You can put it back on the ham and form it even a little bit more if you care to. Mm -hmm.